We have made it to the state semifinals. Four teams remain across all six classifications in the state of Kentucky. Ben Spicer joined by Spencer Hutchison and James Collier. We have one local area school still in the playoffs. The Raceland Rams are in the 1A state semifinals. They will take on Kentucky Country Day, the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, we'll talk about the Rams and that matchup with Kentucky Country Day. But before we get into that, guys, how's everyone doing? Uh, another great season of area high school football. One team remains. East Carter uh, put on a great fight, losing uh, in overtime to Bell County. We'll talk about them coming up. But uh, just what are your all's thoughts about how the season's played out up at this point? Go ahead, Spencer. Um, extremely unexpected. I think that, you know, we were talking in our group chat because me, Ben, and James are in a group chat. And, uh, you know, it was a tough year picking games. Uh, nobody really looked particularly good because there was always a Monday where I think all three of us had to, you know, wait till we were or tagged in a post saying, oh, what was this guy? No, you know, it was a tough year. And it was really hard to get a grip on everybody. Uh, there was a lot of times where there was matchups where you could kind of just throw a blanket over, over everybody because the talent was so uh, neutral. It was so, you know, the t- there was a lot of teams around here that had similar uh, strengths and similar weaknesses. So it made it really tough this year to pick games. So uh, yeah, you, 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 it was an awesome year, awesome year. I was going to say, you go back to that first week, and I think everybody, including the, the guys that picked with the DI, we were all like sub 500. I think we started yeah. off like three or four for nine and ten or something like that. Um, and it, it, I think it showed there was a lot of parity across uh, what we saw this year. Uh, there were teams that were still trying to find their own element and so forth. But much what we expected, the teams that are still playing or played late into the season, it kind of exactly where we thought they were going to be. Um, a lot of our area teams, uh, again, you can't say enough about what Ashland had going and had probably the toughest draw, draw in the entire classification of 4A. Uh, maybe second to Corbin and Boyle. Uh, you know, that's crazy that those two teams didn't end up having a chance to play in a state championship game. But um, I don't know. It was it was a crazy year, but there was some really good football. And you can't say enough about the Raiders and what Tim Champlin has done since he's taken over there in Grayson. Uh, you know, they were on the doorstep of another state semifinal. Man, how big would that have been? Well, I, I, just real quick, you know, Bell County's not right down the road. Uh, that's a three and a half hour, four hour drive, no matter what. And the way that the weather was going down 75 South, it was pouring the entire time. I mean, literally when I say thunderstorm pouring, it was, and you know, I still drove like an idiot, but uh, it was one of those things where East Carter's fan base had probably just as much people there as what Bell County did. I mean, that fan base traveled down there and it got loud. And, and I just, I'm just can't tell you how proud I am of those boys. You know, they they laid it on the line up there. Everybody and you know you saw the the lines on Twitter and stuff. They they were huge underdogs. To everybody except for us. Uh, I, I really just I, I hate that they lost. I you know because if they win, they go to Hart County and James. You probably know this. Hart County, yeah, they got a good record, but East Carter's probably favored in that game. Yeah, so, I would have thought so too. I mean, they, you know, they had a favorable draw that would have fallen yeah. in there for them if it would have gone that way. But uh, you know, you talk about the fan support there. Uh, down in, in on Log Mountain, the Rams came out big down in Lexington Sayer. I mean, they were having to – they probably had to get a shuttle bus to bring people in. Though They had no idea the amount of support that was going to show well, up there. told me that. She said, you know, uh, Sayer had a good crowd, but we had a home field crowd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was It was down It was down both sidelines yeah. and it wrapped into both end zones. So, uh, Ben was there too. I mean, he could speak of the, of the crowd. I mean – it was loud. It seemed like a Raceland home game. Uh, you know, the fans poured out. They supported them. A great, a great showing, especially battling the elements because, you know, it rained all day long. It rained yeah. all the way on the way down there. We got a really big rainstorm there right before halftime and then another one there late third quarter, and the fans just kept going. So, uh, you know, kudos to both fan bases, East Carter and Raceland, showing out in the postseason when your teams need those support. Uh, you couldn't have asked for more support than what we saw from those guys. And to add one more to the Raceland fan base, because I'll be traveling to Louisville on Friday night, and we're going to go to Kentucky Country Day, which I believe is a little township called Prospect, or maybe yeah. Westwood. It's, it's either Prospect or Westwood. It's in that area. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know exactly where it's at, but they it's a really nice area over there. So it is. We'll we'll see. Yeah, look forward to that. Uh, we'll preview that here in just a minute. But uh, to talk on the Raiders a little bit, and James, you mentioned this, the growth under Coach Champlin. Uh, they'll finish this season 
out at nine and three overall. Spencer, you got the chance to cover them throughout the season. Uh, they do lose 12 seniors off of this year's team, but continuing to build that program up in Grayson is, is Coach Champlin, Spencer. He has a program, and uh, you said it perfectly the way it is. And I think that the feeder system, how good it's been lately, plays a big factor in that. You know, even all the way down to the, the JFL levels, they run the offense that what, you know, the, the varsity would run. And I think that's key, you know. And, and uh, you know, like, you know, I say this every week, and I'm kind of going back to the well again. When we left Estill County, I couldn't have been the only one that thought, you know, we were in big trouble, but they got better every single game. Uh, every single game, just it wasn't huge uh, gains sometimes, uh, but you know, just little aspects. They got better at downfield blocking. They got better of reading the offensive line. Their linebackers got better of just being patient. Uh, and I think Landon Yoke. You know, usually you don't see running backs get stronger throughout the year. Landon Yoke got stronger throughout the year, and he came. He became more confident. And I think that Johnson, you know, he's not a guy that'll ever lose you a game. He won't throw the ball into coverage. It's not a, you know, if he's if he's going to get sacked, he'll take the sack. He won't throw it up for grabs. And I think that you know the way Mikey Hall and Gabe Roberts and the offensive line and, and Isaac Messer and and the Carter kid just and the uh, th that senior class was special, man. And they're really going to be missed. And uh, but you know next year, and I hate to even bring it up because we just finished this year, but no matter what, they get their quarterback and running back back. You get you get Johnson back. You get Yoke back. Uh, you get a couple more. And a kid's name that doesn't get mentioned enough by anybody is Potter, the tight end and maybe one of their leading tacklers on defense. Had a huge catch in the back of the end zone against Bell County to take the lead with two or three minutes left. But I tell you guys, that Thomas kid for Bell County is he's unreal. a stud, isn't he? He is yeah. great, man. And when he gets open field, forget it. You ain't getting him. It's over. He's going to the end zone, and if I mean he'll run forever, and nobody would ever catch him. He is fantastic. But, you know, and I mentioned this to an East Carter parent earlier today. It took two all-time running backs to get East Carter out of the playoffs the two times out of the last three years, and Isaac Dixon and Thomas down at Bell County. But I wanted to say one thing real quick. Bell County, class acts, guys. Uh, they The hospitality was great. Uh, their fans were, you know, didn't mouthy, no, nothing mouthy, nothing dirty. Their players played with class. They coached, the coaches coached with class. And that facility is beautiful down there. So, uh, overall, great year for East Carter. I couldn't ask for anything better, and I had a blast doing it. And you think about East Carter, they were, you know, probably two, maybe three plays away from going to Bell County, which and if this if this Undefeated. Been a three, they, they wouldn't have been at Bell County. Uh, no, you know, they, exactly. You know, they, they beat they, Bell County. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say they're 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 probably not on the road. They're probably playing that game at home. Yeah. Um. Now, and again, it's it's one of those things. You know, it's it's easy to sit back here and look at that schedule and say where it is. But, um. But I think what you said too is right. With with Landon, I think the fact was, did he get stronger as the year go on? How much was that confidence that allowed him to Absolutely. run the way that he needed to do? I think that Absolutely. was a big key. Um. And you know, you go back to, I know when I talk with Coach Champ in the preseason. One of the things that he pointed out was the fact of, you know, last year when Johnson got sprung into having to beat a quarterback, they had to play that Martin County game in the last game of the regular season and then got that postseason game. And having him get those two varsity starts, how much did that pay off for him this year of already kind of having his feet wet, knowing what he needed to do and so forth to where he could really settle in? And like you said, he's not going to lose you a game, but he is he's a game manager. Right. And I, I really think of what he was able to do of understanding that they're a run run first team, but they've got the guys that they can stretch the field and, and go over the top when they need to, and that's really big. They got, you know, as I said it earlier, they got better each and every game. And I think that not only did they gain confidence in the way they played, I think the coaches got confident, more confident in the way their kids played a little bit too. Because you've seen Tim Champlin, and we've watched Coach Tim Champlin for years, James, on a – fourth and two or fourth and three at the four yard line. They had to get in between the one and two. He could have sent Carter out there and kicked the field goal, took, taken the lead. And, and that would have been, you know, they, they would have ultimately probably lost anyways, but he didn't do that. He said, you know what? Uh, if my offensive line can't get us two or three yards, we probably don't deserve to win anyways. And I thought, you know, this is Landon Yoke. He's going to hand it off to Landon Yoke no matter what. He puts the ball in Johnson's hands and he finds Potter in the back of the end zone. That's just unbelievable catch. I mean, just unbelievable. And and, and, it, and, it, and it's big to say that you've got those options to where, like you said, right. everybody in the building probably expected, okay, here comes Landy Yoke on a dive. Yeah. And then and then you drag out a little tight end pop pass there that yeah. nobody sees coming. And 
you have to think about that's the options that they have. And it's always great when you don't show those throughout the regular season and then when you need them the most, they're in a, a tight situation, in a tight ball game on the postseason with the, with the season on the line, you drag that out. You know, that right there says a lot about his coaching staff too and how yeah. much preparation they've gone through to, to believe in that situation that that was the best option for that time. They had a great team. They were, you know, like I said, if they get, if let's just say they beat Bell County, they probably go win at Hart County, and then you're at Kroger Field, and anything could happen. And even if you don't win at Kroger Field, you're there though. Yeah, you yeah. made it. So I mean, that's a big deal. And I think that I think they had a fantastic year. And yeah, I was depressed uh, leaving. I left Log Mountain. I, I called my girlfriend. I was upset. I didn't cry or anything, but uh, we talked. <laughs> about home, but uh, I was really upset. And then I got to Bucky's. You ever stopped at a Bucky's? <laughs> I oh, haven't been at Bucky's, God. man, but oh, I've man. seen it. But I, it's, it's like phenomenal, isn't it? Holy yeah. cow. Bucky's is the best. Hey, if you're in Richmond or you got to go through Richmond, if you don't stop at Bucky's, you're missing out. I stopped in there and I got a couple of Christmas sorts for the tree. Uh, but I didn't want to get a brisket sandwich. That, that, that's what they were serving because anytime you go up and get a brisket sandwich, they're like, brisket on the block. I, I didn't want to be like looking around going, oh, there's another fat guy that wanted a brisket. No, that's, that's the whole thing, man. Yeah, you, you got to get, get, get a brisket sandwich. Yeah, I know. But, uh, you know, at that time when I pulled in, because I, I was one of the last ones out after I had to dump the three and a half pounds of water on top of my canopy and put everything up. But, uh, when I pulled in, hey, that was the official gas station of Beach Carter High School. I looked to my <laughs> left and my right, and it was all a sea of red and blue. And, you know, that's just, you know, I, I think I, we didn't communicate. Everybody just wanted to stop at Bucky's, and I highly suggest it. The place is awesome. <laughs> Bucky's has not sponsored the show, but uh, Bucky's no. listening, and, and you want to. No. Hey, uh, Yeah, throw some throw some them. love this way. Come on over. Right. <laughs> right. I just gave you a huge promotional mention. I mean, for free. Just, yeah. yeah. For it's free, yeah. Gas. And what's weird is if you have to pay cash because I couldn't find my card. So I had to pay cash for gas. Well, my pump number was 201. Does that tell me how many gas pumps I have? <laughs> so I had to go back twice just to make sure that I didn't put gas on the wrong pump. Oh, man. Well, unfortunately, there will not be a Bucky's on the way to Louisville on Friday night when Raceland takes on Kentucky Country Day. No, but there's uh, a Culver's. It's not yeah, as good as Bucky's, yeah. but Culver's is pretty daggone good. I would say Indies. If you like chicken, make a stop by Indies in Louisville. Chicken Indies. wings, can't go wrong with Indies. I don't know if they have one up near uh, where KCD is. It's a little on the outskirts of Louisville, but Indies can always recommend. I'll go out of my way for some Indies. I thought about going out of my way for Bucky's. I'm not going to lie. Uh, when I was at Sayre, because it was like 25 minutes. Yeah, so it is, south, but it was too far from, out of the way. I didn't when you're driving from Lexington, though, you have to go through Winchester. Yeah. And when you go through Winchester, right it's there. almost like going through Calixburg downtown. You feel like at, at times you need to check your map because you're. am I going the right way? Yeah. Is this the way I'm supposed <laughs> to be going? So, you know, but it all worked out great. We had a great trip. Everybody got there safe. We didn't have any injuries from anybody. The kids played great, you know, and, and there was no – and. Coach Tim Champlin don't like the moral victories, and no coaches do. But those kids put it on the line, guys. They didn't go into the game thinking, well, this is probably the end of our season. No, they showed up, and they thought they were going to win. And if it hadn't been for Thomas, Bell County would tell you. Coach Dudley would tell you. Uh, if it hadn't been for him, East Carter probably would have mopped them. Uh, that's just yeah. what it would have been. East Carter fell down 16 to nothing midway through the second quarter, and it would have been easy for a team to say, you know what, they're probably a lot better than us. East Carter scored – Outscored Bell County after that thirty to six. Mm. So wow. crazy. Well, the chance to uh, go to Louisville this Friday. Uh, the winner will go to Lexington in the one A state championship. Uh, look at the one A state semifinals. It's Pikeville at Campbellsville and Raceland traveling to Kentucky Country Day. We showed you some scores from round three earlier. Uh, Campbellsville beat Newport Central Catholic twenty eight twenty three. It was Kentucky Country Day over Ludlow. 29 to 16. Pikeville beats Middlesboro by 20. Raceland over Sayre, 42 to 27. I think the Rams had a chance late to pull, maybe win by 20. They had that pick six there late. Uh, Coach Sammons was a little critical of his decision there and in the postgame interview with you, James. But uh, looking at those scores from round three, you kind of go into this and think, okay, if things go well, it should be a rematch in the 1A state championship game, James. Yeah, and I think we've all said this from the word go this season. If it's anybody but Raceland and Pikeville in the state championship, it's probably a shocker. Uh, and you see what you've got there. Uh, I think that both of those teams going into this game are both going to be favored. Um, but we'll see how things play out. But you, you look at the way that Raceland played, it determined real quickly 
that they were going to make Sayer stop their running attack, and they simply couldn't do it. They snapped the ball 69 times. They ran the ball 63 of those for 427 yards. Noah Wallace runs for 209 yards. Lundy goes for over 100. Um, It was the first time the Rams had had a 200-yard rusher since Bailey Walker did it back in the 16th season. Uh, I haven't gone back far enough to find the last time the Rams amassed 400 rushing yards in a game. Um, Noah Wallace goes for over 1,000 yards in his career for the second time. He also did it his sophomore year. But it was – I mean, it was crazy good. Jackson Hyden, a career-long 72-yard rushing touchdown that he burst there in the third quarter. But it was it was kind of crazy, you know. Sayer go, gets the football. They win the toss. They want the ball. They go right down the field, 81 yard, 82 yards, put it in the end zone. Pennington shows off, hits Cuff or Kaufman. And then the Rams go 15 plays, 85 yards, seven minutes, that they just stuff the ball right down the throats of, of the Spartans. And you could easily tell real quickly – there was no way that Sayer was going to be able to withstand the pressure they were getting put on at that, at that point of contact. Sayer goes back down, makes it 14-7. to seven. Rams go right back down the field again, punch it in. And then they said – I talked with Coach Sammons after the game, and you know they went with the two-point conversion there, but he said it was something their coaches saw there in the first extra point attempt on the swinging gate that they felt like they had an opportunity. And they said, if it's there again, go. Isaac Browning walks in. Uh, he was untouched on the two-point conversion. So then at the point of when the first failed third-down conversion came in the game, the teams were combined eight of eight on third-down conversions. Raceland gets the third-down stop there and makes it fourth down. And in the muffed punt, the Rams recover it uh, and or gets the stop the stuff there on the, on the muffed punt. They only had 43 yards, and they march it right down, go to the locker room up. Then they get the touchdown right out of the locker room. Then the onside kick, if you will, uh, you know whether it was a squib kick that was fumbled or an onside, however you want to call it. But either way, it went from fourteen to seven to thirty-five seven or thirty-five fourteen. And you know, I talked with Coach Pennington after the game, and he said we felt like if we could keep the game close, stay within a score, maybe have a tie game, put them behind a score going into the fourth quarter, we felt like we could apply the pressure on race or maybe get them uncomfortable. He goes, but when we went down 35-14, we were out of our element. They were doing everything they wanted to do. They controlled the A-gap. And, you know, it's some nights you just have to tip your cap to the other team and say, listen, they're just better than us. And, you know, I talked with several people from Lexington last week, and I told them all the same thing. And some of them kind of shunned me off, but several of them texted me back on the way home and said, you called it. It was about a half of football. And that's kind of where I expected it to be. The Rams were just so powerful up front. And you can't say enough about what that offensive line has done on a total rebuild. I mean, those guys that's on that offensive line played very little football last year. And it's been kind of a build this ship as we fly it type of deal. But, man, they have really settled in. And you give a little bit of a crease to Isaac, Noah, and, and Jackson. And then you've got to throw Logan Lundy in there for, for an opportunity. First time he had rushed for over 100 yards since back uh, two seasons ago when he did it against Paintsville in the regular season. Uh, and I, I talked to him after the game, and he said, I've been on coach telling him, say, let me run, let me run, let me run. He said, we're saving you. Well, they let the cat out of the bag, and KCD is really going to have to come with everything they've got because you look at what Raceland has to offer. I do not expect anything outside of the Rams are going to line it up, they're going to try to run it down their throats, and they're going to make you stop them. And if you can stop them, then they'll go to the air. But, you know, when you, you throw six passes in a football game, probably only threw it, needed to throw it five. The, you know, the pick six there was in that last, that last drive. But you probably didn't even need to throw it five times. Uh, you know, they could have rushed this ball in entirety of a football game. But it just it shows the old adage of, of what Coach Salmon says, two things that doesn't survive in the month of November, dogs trying to cross the traffic in rush hour and teams who can't run and stop the run. Um, and Raceland proved that with uh, with a mighty statement on the road uh, last Friday night. 
Let's turn our focus to Kentucky, Kentucky Country Day a little bit here. And looking at their schedule, they've got some big wins, particularly early in the season. Uh, Atherton, I know they went on to have a good season, beat them by 11 to sales. That's a big win in overtime on the road. Uh, some bigger, some wins over some bigger schools, Walton Verona, 43 to seven, John Harden, 28 to three. But you look later in their season, particularly those last two regular season games of the year, they fall at Campbellsville, who of course is still alive. They'll take on Pikeville and then uh, lost to Henry County to close out the regular season. Since then, they've got double digit wins in the playoffs in all three of their games. But what's the early synopsis scouting report on the Bearcats uh, from what you've seen, James? Well, the biggest thing that, that jumps off at me is that their leading rusher, and I don't know if he's out for the season or if he just had a late season injury, but he hasn't played in, in the last three games. Um, so, you know, he's a 1,000-yard rusher on the season. And give me just a second. I'm pulling up my stuff here. But uh, when I was starting my stuff, yes. So, Kasani Wilson, 1,017 yards, 11 rushing touchdowns. He hasn't played in the last three contests. Um, and he only had 10, 10 rushes in that season, the ending loss there against Henry County before they went into the postseason. Uh, Ethan Harris, uh, 2,000 yards. Uh, I know I, when I talked with Coach Sammons in the postgame show, he said that I think they've got a couple of tall receivers that are on the outside. So, you know, it's it's not something that's going to be – I think that they're probably going to want to try to throw the football. So you have to think, you know, is it going to be – you know, racing kind of preparing for another Sayer type of deal. But, you know, give Luke Pennington the, all the accolades that kid yeah. deserves. You know, 50 total touchdowns this season, no interceptions. And, you know, when he was able to, to set and throw the football down the field, he could get it to where he needed to be. But I fully expect kind of a, a blueprint of what racing saw last week of, it, you know, if somebody catches the football, that's fine. But make them pay when they catch it. And you could really tell there late that there were several of those big hits that race on late on those guys early on that created drops. Mm -hmm. It created uh, balls that flew a little bit higher because the pressure was a little bit tighter and stuff. And I think that we're going to see a lot of the same thing this week when the Rams go to Louisville. Yeah, I got to give a shout out to Brody Austin, man. I think he it was back to back plays. Uh, he came up and and delivered some big pops on some share receivers, and that kind of set the tone, set a message for later on in the game. Uh, like you pointed out. Uh, so for this game, for Raceland, what do you think the biggest key to coming out with a victory and advance it to the state championship is? Run the football. Uh, you, you've got a stud running back in Noah Wallace. And, I mean, if, if someone didn't know who Noah Wallace was before last Friday night, I guarantee you they know now. When you show up with your best game of your career in the state quarterfinals on a team that knows you're going to run the football – and there's nothing they can do to stop you. Uh, I think that says a lot right there. But, you know, Noah and it was it was one of those deals of they were putting eight and nine guys in the box. And we, we you know, I talked with Coach Sammons after the game, and he said, we expected seven or eight. He said, we'd never seen them put nine in the box in the film that we'd broken down. So that was a little bit of a challenge. And he said, even with having one-on-one -on -one coverage on, on the outside, we felt like that we still had the numbers that we wanted and the way that we wanted to run the A-gap. And they just wasn't going to go away from it. But I can't say enough about Jackson Hyten this year, too. You know, he was the fourth man in the running back stable last year behind Wallace, Jules Farrell, and Isaac Browning. And then you look at what he's done this season. He's been one of those guys, he's just a punishing back. And he can come in. He may only carry the ball seven, eight, nine, ten times a game because he's on the field for defense on that linebacking court. But when he gets the football, he runs to contact. And I think those two this year have, especially as we get late in the season where we are right now, is going to be pivotal. You mentioned Logan Lundy went over the 100-yard mark as well. Isaac Browning is a guy who can come in and get you some touches, some good touches. He had 78 carries for 245 and three touchdowns this season. So having all those weapons, have multiple guys that can come in off the bench, give you some fresh legs, especially at a 1A school. And you've even seen it, Spencer, uh, with East Carter, several guys on the Raiders that can run the ball as well. What does that do, especially this time of the year, Spencer, we'll start with you, to help you you know, get separation so it's not 60 carries going to a Daniel Thomas or, or something like that? Well, I think that it, it's not only how, how you run the ball, but who runs the ball. Uh, you know, Tim Chample did a really good job of integrating the jet sweep. And it doesn't seem like that would be a big deal, but when you're attack, when you're against a defense who particularly runs a four-man front, 
uh, it makes them not necessarily go into that bear mode. And when I'm when it, if you don't know what a bear mode is, it puts you know defensive linemen over guards and tackles, and it lets you know linebackers kind of step over top of the center. Uh, when you're able to kind of throw that jet sweep in there, you're not able to go into that front. And I think that that, you know, that still leaves A, B, and C gap open. Um, the thing about Raceland that's kind of been a pleasant surprise for them is I actually got to watch their Wheelersburg game, their scrimmage game that they did. And Heighton ran the ball well in that game too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, I think that, uh, yes, going back to last year, Raceland lost a ton of talent. But you've had guys, familiar faces, step into bigger roles. Not saying Jackson Heighton's role as linebacker, you know, one of the best defense players in the area is not a big role, but him being able to carry the ball the way he has has been a huge X factor for that offense. But I agree with James. Hey, it, this is the way I look at it. If that, if I'm getting four yards or more a carry, I'm not throwing the ball at all because I'm killing the clock and I'm running it right down their throat. And what happens when you run it down their throat? They get tired, especially in 1A football when most kids play both sides. 36 minutes time of possession. The Rams had the football to 12 for Lexington Sayer Friday night. And, you know, you, you were talking about four yards of carry. They were averaging 6.9 a carry. I would never um, pass you know, it if I was, I was is that the And case? that's the thing is, and it was it was one of those things you could watch, it, especially there in the second half. But, Ben, you can attest to this. You could look at the players for Sayer. They were gassed. Yeah. yeah. They just didn't have that, pe- that pep in the step. They were getting shoved. You, I, I noticed a couple of times there were Rams that were continuing their block downfield, and they were pancaking kids ten yards down the field. Yeah, uh, I mean it was just it was just a physical battle that the Rams imposed their will, and I expect nothing different than this. I think KCD is going to have to understand He's going prediction mode to, right now. Being they're going old. to have to stop the run <laughs> early and put the Rams into a throwing mode, uh, and it's again. I don't know that you want to look at it and say, well, it's our best option to make Logan Lundy throw the football. But at the same time, you've got to be able to find a way to keep the Rams either behind the sticks or third and long. But even the other night, third and six, third and seven, they didn't even hesitate. They didn't snap the ball once on a fourth down. 12 out of 12 on third down conversions. On that. I don't know that I've ever seen that at any level. Wow. That's crazy. And then there was that one third and 15 where they got backed up after the Noah Wallace hurdle that got penalized. And you're thinking, okay, well, they got to put it in the air here. What are they going to do? Well, they hand it back off to Wallace and he, you know, carries about five defenders over that first down. Well, mark. a product of that, though, is you got to think the way the weather was. And when yeah. you get, you know, high school kids out there, a long snapper and a punter, the worst things could happen. So I think it, Coach yeah. Samuels, I'm not speaking for him, but if I'm him, I'm not punting no matter what anyways. So I might as well get as much yardage as I can on third down, but we were lucky enough to get first downs every time we had third down. So uh, I don't think you're punting unless you absolutely – you're on your goal line and, you you know, you have to punt. You don't have a choice. But if I'm anything past the 40-yard line, I'm going for it. Yeah. You know, it's funny you talk about that hurdle. Uh, it's on the front page of the Daily Independent tomorrow, by the way. Uh, I talked with uh, Noah after the game, and I said, I said, how about that big run? He goes, yeah, I wasn't supposed to do that. He said, I guess that's not allowed. I said, not in high school. <laughs> no. No. Melissa actually came home. She said, Noah made a really good play. He ran over or jumped over a kid, and they threw a flag on him. I said, well, that's a flag. So. <laughs> flag in high school. Um, it's really cool. Felicia got a really cool picture of the hurdle. Um, and you can see Coach Fannin is on the sideline, and he's kind of bit down like, Looking like this, like, oh, that was cool. <laughs> One thing about Noah Wallace, don't invite that kid over for breakfast. He does all the food. I made something like four pounds of hash browns and six oh, pounds. Oh, he can of eat. I can like to eat, man. Like Obviously, I'm kidding. He can come over here and eat breakfast anytime he wants to. No, <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, and I, and I can speak about this. So I had Noah in class last year, okay? And for the first semester, I bet this kid said maybe three words to me the entire semester. And then the season gets over, and all of a sudden he just kind of opens up, and he's like he came out of his shell, kind of like what he did this year with football. Uh, you know, I feel like that he took that next step forward. But you just you find a kid; he's a high character kid, he's a fun kid to be around. And when he, you know, when he straps that chin strap down and, and goes to work, it's all business. But it was funny. There was one time during the game he had just come off after a big play and he was standing on the sideline. He turns around and I look and he's waving at me like this. And he is a like, great Hi. kid, man. Like, he's yeah. a great kid. But one thing about but, Noah Wallace though, and I will say this and it's going to embarrass him a little bit. He will not play me in Madden. He don't want it. I'm telling you, he, uh, he refuses to play me in Madden. 
he, he, he won a couple games downstairs against the other racial football players when, you know, the king of the house and Madden sits up here and watches TV. He didn't want it. <laughs> Ask boys in Raceland how what happens when they play me in Madden. He, he didn't want to come to the big boy level, huh? Hey, just like Evan Burrow was outside when we play basketball. He didn't want it either. That's just the way it is. <laughs> You know, but no, those kids are little kids. kids. No, you couldn't ask for a better group of kids when you talk about Evan and Noah and Lundy and and Brody Austin and those kids, you know, even Parker Fannin and Ison. They're just a great bunch of kids. Not, uh, besides football, just, you know, throw football out of the way. They're, you know, like you said, high character, just great kids with bright futures, man. You talk about Parker Fannin. You look at a kid, he, he's leading the team in receptions, leading the team in yards. Um, and then you, you take in the fact that, he didn't have a single ball thrown his way in the game the other night, and the only job that he had to do was block. Right. And then on the defensive side of things, uh, you know, he was in there on a couple big stops, uh, around balls and stuff. But he's just – he's one of those high-character kids that uh, he's just – he's a very quiet type of kid until you get to know him. But I, I kind of kidded the other – I said, he must have got his personality from his mom because he's nothing like Coach Fan. <laughs> Uh, Jackson Hyten, he's kind of got that pit bull mentality, man, don't he? he I mean, he, when he's in that linebacker position, uh, he's looking for something uh, with bad – he's got bad intentions, man, when he's on the field. He's looking for to knock somebody's head off. When, and, you know, James, you've watched the Rams more than anybody this year. This will actually Friday night be the first time that I'll watch Raceland in a regular season game. That's crazy to me. I, I, yeah, it's going to be – Because I actually had a week off, and then James texted me and said, hey, you want to work the camera out at West Carter? Well, I, you know, so I like, sure, I will. But of course, I got in trouble here at home. But, uh, but no, I've never, I haven't got to watch this team in person. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Of course, uh, the Thursday's real busy, James. I got the the breakfast down there at Raceland, the community breakfast. I'm gonna go to that. And I'm gonna watch their practice, and then I gotta come home and make my signature dish. And no, it's not baked beans. It's clean. well. I was gonna say, are we are yeah. we gonna have to send you baked beans over for Thanksgiving? Hey, if Alicia wants to give me some baked <laughs> beans, you know I won't pass on those things. By the way, listen, James's wife, and I'll never ever give up this recipe, makes the best baked beans in Eastern Kentucky, and I put them against anybody's. Oh, oh man, you heard it I here. Even, see, see, Ben, this is what you missed out on by by not, know. You know, not making it to the fantasy football draft. Oh gosh. Uh, listen, he smoked two pork tenderloins, which they were great, by the way. But the baked beans stole the show. Oh, wow. stole the show. That was it. I had some of those baked beans. Who who made these? Where'd you guys get these at? And Fleet chose. I made them. I said, bless your heart. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, speaking of something that Spencer threw out there, um, this Thursday morning at 9 o'clock at the high school, they're doing a community breakfast. Uh, all the team will be there. Everyone is invited. Um, it usually takes about an hour, hour 15 for everybody to eat and stuff. They've got plenty of food. Uh, it's really good food. Our cooks there at race and they are phenomenal. So come hungry, uh, come out and support the kids. And then they'll go over, they'll do about a 90 minute walkthrough. Um, they're usually out of there by noon. So they can get the kids on home to their families and stuff so they can celebrate Thanksgiving with their families and stuff. But you know, it's a, it's a big event. It's a big community event. It's kind of something that's becoming, Almost an expectation is if you're around Raceland, there's three things that's going to happen in November. They're going to run the football, they're going to stop the run, and they're going to play football on Thanksgiving. So, um, you know, 9 o'clock this Thursday, uh, Felicia and I are actually going to get up. We're going to put the turkeys in the oven and on the smoker. We're going to run up to Russell, go run a 5K, and then we're coming over to uh, to do the uh, community breakfast and stuff. So uh, we'll be there. Well, but, uh, don't tell her if she's going to bring baked beans to let me know. I'll just unlock my car. No, not to not to bring him in there. We'll, we'll, we'll do. We may we may have to do a Spencer care package. That we'll, we'll do a special <laughs> drop. We're gonna, we're gonna look like a drug. We're gonna look like a drug deal going down in the parking lot. <laughs> hey, I pay good money for those beans. You know. So here's the thing, though. What I was gonna mention is, I'd love to have some hot baked beans the other night at Bell County. The rain. It was like a scene off Forrest Gump. He was walking through the swamp at, in Vietnam, and it was coming in sideways, man. And a, and I had that little tar that canopy it was doing good it really was until it started accumulating on the roof and then i got yeah. nervous because all you know the computer and the mixers right underneath yeah. it so i took off i sacrificed my big columbia waterproof jacket it was a windbreaker top style and i just threw it over the equipment well of course it still got wet so it sounds <laughs> like that I was in a, well if you go back and listen to the broadcast it sounds like i was in an elevator so you had a mixture of the the electronics got wet and no cell phone service, but here at Cool Hits, we get the job done. The broadcast is on. 
But when I got in the parking lot, I literally took my shirt off and ringed it up, and it looked like that I just pulled a mop out of the bucket and getting ready to mop the hallway. I mean, it, it just whooshed all over the ground. And I about was hypothermic, but we got it done. Yeah, that was my, my canopy, too. It started gathering water. I turned around and I looked. And I was like, this is not a good situation yeah. to get ready to happen. So I just grabbed it and pulled it. And, of course, where does the water go? Right on my feet and my tailgate. So I was scared to death because I had the power strip on one of the sets of bleachers. Well, the bleachers are metal. Everything's wet. So if I make the wrong move, not only am I you know, going to get electrocuted, so is everybody on my road. So yeah, I was I was kind of you know, and I, as soon as I interviewed Tim Champlin, I went to break and I sit here and thought, and the rain picked up. I was like, I gotta get out of here. So I unplugged everything real quick, <laughs> threw it in my crate. And got listen, out of it. listen, Ben Ben knows all about electric and and water and and power strips and and storms and stuff. Uh, he had an epic fail down in uh, St Andrews, North Carolina, uh, in, a, in a football game where it was the last ninety seconds of the game. There were two touchdowns scored in the last ninety seconds. And, he was off the air for the entire time because a canopy collapsed and all the water dumped into the surge protector and took him off the air. He comes back on and it was like, Oh my uh, well, God. That was my ultimate get- fear. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think I sent you guys the picture of it. I mean, there was probably enough water there to fill a couple five gallon buckets full. And, wow. and it was kind of like, you know, the, the way the canopies open, the pressure is on the outside. And how you yeah. fold it is on the inside. So when the pressure's on the inside, it yeah. wants to fold up. So I had actually been prepared. I had these heavy duty zip ties. So as you know, kind of a reinforced it, I zip tied them to the stands. And I don't think if I hadn't have, it would have went straight down on me, man. I wouldn't look like I was at the splash pad in the middle of summer down. <laughs> the yeah, it would have been, and I would have been probably fried. Seriously, it was awful. But we did it. We we did the game. I had a great time and. And like I said, I got two Christmas ornaments out of it at Buckets. Well, hopefully uh, the weather conditions this Friday night are a little more favorable. Uh, we're all three going to be there. We might have to do something special for the occasion, but we'll be in Louisville, Kentucky Country Day, hosting Raceland, a chance to go to Kroger Field for the 1A State Championship. Uh, we'll have the game live for you on YouTube. Hopefully everything goes well with the feed. We'll get things squared away for you for the broadcast, and uh, we'll have highlights after the game as well. For Spencer and James, I am Ben. Hang on a minute. I want to pick this everyone. game real quick. I want to pick this game real quick. I am going to pick. <laughs> you all you know who James is going to pick. pick Raceland. No, James. James, yeah. He's going to listen. If if Raceland was playing Alabama, he'd pick Raceland. <laughs> no, no. I, I, hey, listen. I think Raceland is going to win too. But I think it's similar circumstances. Put that record on repeat. And I would give the ball to Noah Wallace until he threw up. I would. <laughs> Him and Jackson Heighton, they would not come off the field. I'd give them the ball. And I don't know if Raceland runs. Uh, what they used to run, that kind of that split back look where they hand it off to Noah or they hand it off to Jackson, kind of that, you know, two-headed monster. Uh, I would do it until they stop me. And if I just got three yards, I'd do it all night <laughs> until they stop me. Because not only are you you're getting first downs, you're chewing the clock. Mm-hmm. Your best offense, I mean, your best defense is when the offense is on the field. Raceland wins on the road by two or three scores. Ooh. Like yeah, it. Raceland gave the, the – Sarah had the football three times the entire yeah. second half. Yeah, time of possession wins football games, guys. Hmm. Yeah. I've got the Rams. I'm going to go Rams 35 to 20. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of right in there. Somewhere probably two, three touchdowns. Um, I just think that the Rams are they're too strong up front. The, the rushing attack is second to none. And, again, you know, we talk about Jackson and Noah, but you've got to account for Logan Lundy. And, and I think that that is an element itself defense has really struggled with because London can beat you with his feet, he can beat you with his arm. Uh, and, you know, when you, you lose account of him, he's a kid that's really, really smart about just pulling it down and taking off and running and picking up five, six yards. Yes. But if, if, you, if you leave him unaccounted for, you've got that option. But then on the backside of that, Noah Wallace and, and Jackson Height have just been superb this year. And I think that's – you know, you, you get into a battle this late in the season, which team can stop the run, which team can run the football, I think it goes to Rams. And one more thing, uh, of course, you know, East Carter got eliminated, but I think I can speak for James and Ben. It's been a true pleasure to come out there and cover you guys this year, and, and we hope to continue that in the future. Uh, just a great group of seniors coming through, and uh, really just uh, I can't explain how awesome it was to go to every single one of your games and uh, uh, it's just been a great ride. Of course, I started out there. This senior class is coming through. 
was freshmen when I first started out at, at East Carter. So it's a, it means a little bit more because I've got to, you know, I got to watch every single game that Isaac Messer played. I got to watch every single game that Isaac Boggs played in, or, you know, he graduated last year. And then I got to see, you know, uh, Charlie Terry, Canyon Cozy, Connor Goodman. I got to see all those kids. And, and, and you know, it's just, uh, of course, the big physical offensive linemen that have come through there, the linebackers and Carter and, and a kid that they recruited out of the hallways with Potter, how big he came along there. At the end, just uh, it was just an awesome year, and I couldn't ask for anything better. And uh, I'm truly grateful that I got to work with great people like Jeff Irwin and Travis and, and Ian out there. And, you know, we have the best guys at the best positions, and uh, I couldn't ask for anything more. And one thing I want to throw in there too, as well, uh, for the game on Friday, uh, there's three different ways that you can listen in. So it will be on Quiz 1057 FM. We'll have it on the FM. So anybody here locally, if you want to listen to it on the radio, you can. Of course, you can listen to it on the Coyote Sports Network app. And we will have the YouTube feed. I've got a um, – it, it is solid this week, okay? It's been turned over in the hands of Jeff Irwin. So, um, we had a little technical issues last week, and the technical issues was the person that I left in charge of. And that's all on me, okay? Uh, I left it in the hands of Mr. What If, and Mr. What If turned it into a nightmare. But Listen, Jeff I, Irwin called saved, him. I called him, and he was right. Saved the day. Yeah, Jeff Irwin he was right. And uh, he got everything squared away. But we'll have a scoreboard that will be on the on the YouTube page. Uh, but it's just audio only, but it'll be the audio there from the game. But we will have a, a scoreboard there for those listening in so you'll be able to li- to see exactly what the score is at that time and everything. But, uh, again, uh, cool, it's 105.7 FM on the app and as well as on our YouTube page. Countdown to kickoff will begin at a special time this week. We'll go on the air at 7 p.m., uh, not 7.10. Kickoff is scheduled at 7.30, uh, so we'll have a 30-minute pregame show this week. I've got a little something special I'm going to throw in there as well for the uh, for the game to get you kind of hyped up. So uh, I usually save save the uh, the hype uh, hype lead into the game for big games. I don't think they get much bigger in the state semifinals, so we'll, we'll have something fun in there for that. I called uh, the, the person that you're mentioning because my text wouldn't go through, and usually I text him anytime they're scored. I called him, and he goes, boy, it's been a knot tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He yeah. was rattled, man. He's rattled to the court. I said, are you okay? He goes, yeah. It's just anything that could go wrong would go wrong. <laughs> yeah, the problem is everything that went wrong was created by him. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, make sure you hit that like button on the way out, guys. Highlights uh, to come on Friday. Tune into the game if you can't make it as well. Uh, check out highlights from the Race and Sayre game on our YouTube channel as well. For Spencer James, I am Ben. Have a great Thanksgiving, everyone. Hopefully we'll see you back next week as we preview potentially the 1A State Championship game.